All right, ladies, welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. Today, we are derating, if you will, these thick cables that are going into my air-cooled inverter. And so this inverter takes DC in and splits it out to three-phase AC for the motor. And for all intents and purposes, this is a bit overkill. This was originally designed to go inside of a van, a Ford Transit van, which is a little bit bigger than this uh, tiny... MG midget here so we don't need this and normally overkill is fine you just keep it but uh, one of the challenges I have the diameter here doesn't made up into the motor there's a little spot for the motor to accept these and these um, get bolted into it and even if I re-tapped them they're too thick and they start to touch each other actually overlap a little a little bit so uh, there's there's no amount of sh you know shoehorning these guys into that other one now I looked at building a 3d printed piece or something out of metal and then having these guys come in and then transition through another short stubby cable but then you have a connection plus another connection my aim is to simplify that and not to do all that work of course now I'm doing all this work uh, <laughs> I pop this open let's see what this looks like on the inside here There we go. I won't pull it back too much because we've got some ribbon cables here uh, that need to stretch. And this isn't what it looks like originally. There's actually extra. Uh, there's these would be poking through, not unlike this guy, and bolted directly to its respective phase. Massive capacitors in here. And there was previously some support structure here, but I had to remove that to get some wiggle room so I could start pulling these out. But uh, the plan today is to replace these thick cables with something thinner and route them appropriately, and then we'll get this thing reinstalled into the car and hopefully bolted in place uh, so we can get this thing back on the road. So enough jaw jacking for me. Uh, let's cut to some sort of uh, time lapsey or, I don't know, cue the music. this thing up on its side I thought I'd give you guys a better look at some of the guts in here some controls here so this is the board that the um, Arduino is talking to and faking the funk and uh, just sending it all the right can messages that it wants uh, to make that work uh, the other alternative and I, I've seen some DIYers do is they'll they'll have some smarts like or some big power components like these and some um, IGBTs and they'll swap out this or they'll make a clone of this and put in their own controls to to drive these guys so it's it's six one way half a dozen the other it just kind of depends on whether or not you can reverse engineer the messaging that goes to this sometimes it's proprietary signals or messages that they haven't been able to decode and it for their particular skill set it might be cheaper uh and less time consuming to just replace this main board oh yeah well so it goes yeah so it goes You know, sitting here having a think, and it dawned on me, I don't know that everyone 
acknowledges that taking the time to for for a project to sit down and think in the middle of it um, there's a lot of value in that now there was some original ideas I had with this project for everything from using Chevy Volt batteries back here which were all the way up to the tippy top here versus as low as these uh, Ford C-Max ones at a lot lower profile uh, they were heavier you know and if I had just gone full tilt and started bolting those things in and routing stuff and running coolant to them uh, I would I would have been completed but I wouldn't have been happy with it it always been this work in progress but a good chunk of uh, working on a, a multi-part process uh, not like changing a light bulb or something but when you're sitting here doing lots of little steps to try and accomplish one big thing like electrify an old MG midget uh, don't get discouraged if you've got to sit down and have a think about what you're doing or how you're gonna route your cables I mean this one I figured oh, I just throw them over here put some carpet on it no one will be the wiser but then you run into you run into stuff like this bit of trim here which I think held some old like a uh, parcel shelf or like a segmenting piece between the trunk and the the cab and it's pretty sharp or at least it not like make you bleed but it's definitely the kind of thing that over you know a 10 mile drive down the road would pierce its way into this insulation here and you might have a, a high voltage short which would not be ideal uh, this is why we will install a fuse here close to the battery uh, but still it'd be embarrassing uh, if you get stuck on the side of the road with uh, not having a fuse in hand and you gotta get towed with your goofy little uh, DIY electric car so uh, Take your time, be thinking about these things. Uh, even this battery uh, pack as it sits now, I originally had these things standing upright where you could see all of the orange caps and the, the bolts that go through, or not the bolts, but the um, the nuts that intertie all, all the different uh, short bus lengths to connect all the cells. And it's just, that's how these are when they're in Ford C-Max, they're upright that way. And so I they have these captive nuts and I figured I'd probably key off of those to bolt it into the car um, and I just kept sticking with that until back here to make them lay flat they're slightly uh, wider they're, yeah they're slightly wider than they are tall does that make sense so they're they're not a perfect uh, square as, as a side is they're a little bit longer longer this way so if you stand them up I can fit four abreast where if I laid them down I was only able to get three and then I was going to, have to stack this fourth one up on one of the others, and but then to make it look more symmetrical, I was going to, have to stack up all four to be back over here, which would have been fine. Uh, would have uh, brought this up to here, but then we'd start having clearance issues with the hinge here, or what if somebody put something in there and then closes it? You, know, you might just clear it, and then someone that's uh, not you <laughs> starts to put stuff in the trunk here, and that ends up shorting out a cell. Um, so you just start thinking about these things and taking it slow and fooling around with things and that's part of why this project's taken longer and also um, well let's be honest it's more my procrastination than it is sitting here and having a good think on this stuff but sometimes that's what you got to do you got to come out here into the garage and just stare at it for a while the other area I stared at for a while was this was the location for a contactor box so I gotta throw a little light on the subject here so a contactor box, if you're not familiar in the, in the EV world, is just a safe from you know, reaching fingers and uh, drop tools, a safe place to put your relays, maybe a fuse, uh, in my case a, uh, a shunt potentially, but although that might live here, uh, to measure the amount of current running out of the batteries or into the batteries. But all that stuff needs a nice home. And a lot of folks put them uh, just here so that you have easy access to it or it's near the motor or the inverter um, or maybe all the way back near the battery. Um, there's a lot of different options you have. And I had this old Pelican case kicking around and it's already got holes in it from another project. And I thought, why don't I put it down here in the wheel well? I started looking at that and then I got one of the other seats and set it here and then put this thing where I was gonna have it and sat there for a moment and thought well now it's gonna you know whoever the passengers in this car is always gonna have their feet up on it and kicking it and nudging it and going what's that maybe even want to look into it to see <laughs> what it is it'd be bolted down there but um, then I had a second thought and that was to toss it up underneath here 
and bolt it. And when you do that, by the time you come out here, you, you don't even see it. It's just tucked up under there really nice and neat. And the added benefit of being able to, to open the lid to service the stuff, it's almost like a glove box, but in reverse, or just hanging up with upside down there. So uh, that's probably what I'll end up doing. But then again, I might sit here and stare at it and have a good think for another 10 minutes before I start drilling holes in this thing. And that's another thing. I'm, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm not trying to, yeah, I'm not trying to restore this thing to some sort of uh, concourse quality thing or even just something you'd take to a car show. Um, it's, th the goal here is to just get this thing back on the road and enjoyed uh, and seen. So uh, then the added benefit of it being a bit of a sleeper with the electric motor, uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun. And I was also tired of tuning carburetors. So so I'll likely leave all these dents and dings because I think it gives it a bit of character. It's got some wear marks from where someone was leaning in on here and working on the motor all those years. So uh, for the time being, those will stay on there. But I also don't want to get too radical. I'm trying to be smart and uh, find alternatives of routing cables so that I can utilize all of the existing holes we have uh, in the car. I don't want to go uh, tearing this up. And now, MG Midgets aren't uh, crazy collector cars. They're, I mean, if you if you want one, you can find one. Uh, this isn't like one of a hundred and, you know, heaven forbid I drill a hole in it somewhere. Um, but there's no reason to sit here and just hack at it and completely destroy the thing. So. I'm trying to route stuff where it would have previously been done from the factory and then I'll come back in later and fill all these other holes in with little grommets and stuff and try to uh, clean it up as best I can. We run some of these uh, bolts all the way in so they don't go vibrating out, but a little bit of Loctite on those. I think that's where I'll leave it for today. Uh, this is more or less to let folks know I'm, I'm back on it. We're <laughs> taking another stab at it, like I said, uh, and see if we can get this thing up and running in the next uh, video or two. So stay tuned. Uh, if you want to follow along at home, make sure that you're subscribed to Julian's Random Projects. Clicking the bell apparently helps. I don't know. Um, all the other kids are doing it. And be sure to leave a comment before you go. Let us know. Are you enjoying the MG Midget series? You want to get back to PS Vitas and GameCubes? What are your thoughts?